Hello and welcome to Talking Books. I'm Jill de Villiers. Just down the road from our Santon studio, or within easy driving distance at least, lies the cradle of humankind. These are one of the places on the continent that tells the story of the dawn of humankind, born from the soil of Africa and now populating the whole world. My guest today is David Robbins, author of 20 books, and he has traveled one of these routes that our long ago ancestors traveled in those early days. His latest book is a tour de force. It is called Walking to Australia, 21st Century Excursions into Humanity's Greatest Migration. Before we start chatting to David, uh, let me share this description of the book by the editor, Wesley Thompson. He wrote, a rare and staggering work of ambitious scope and literary depth. Readers will come away from the text immensely rewarded. David Robbins, thanks so much for joining me. It's fabulous to be here. Let's start chatting about what inspired you to write the book. You were visiting your son and his family in Australia. Yes, yes. And um, I didn't really want to go to Australia because my my perception of the world had always been sort of from north to south and the relationship between Africa, um, turbulent as it has been, uh, and Europe. And uh, nevertheless, I went and I was very quickly captured and I saw in me almost immediately the opportunity to do this incredibly ambitious travel book come whatever else you want to see in it. But there was also another aspect to this, and this was your grandson, an, yes. an autistic boy. Yes. And how does this fit into your book and, and how it unfolded? Well, um, we went three times to Australia. Well, we have been three times to Australia during the period that I was working on this book. And he absolutely fascinated me. And it, to me, uh, he became like a symbol of humanity itself, where his responses were um, incredibly um, s compact and simplified without the airs and graces that, that we put on um, once we are um, civilized people, or as, as we think sometimes one wonders these days. but. Uh, so he, he, be, he became an absolutely essential part of my thinking because he must have had characteristics like the early, early uh, human beings who came out of Africa. Now on that first uh, one of the trips to Australia, you went and looked at the petroglyphs. Yes. And uh, what was your response to that and how did that inspire you? That, that was, uh, it was just astonishing because, um, uh, the, you know, the whole thing becomes fairly complex, although mine is not a book of science at all. Um, I, st I respect science hugely and um, they've helped me to understand what I, what I was doing. But the petroglyphs were brilliant and it, the part of it was uh, there was a, um, what people call the first representation of a human face. In other words, it was just the face. It wasn't stick figures with a little face on top as a lot of our own um, uh, s sort of sand and uh, proto-sand stuff is like. But there was this face of immense puzzlement. And that seemed to me to be um, exactly right. It must have been astonishing, as, a, as in an autistic boy, to be confronted by the amazing spectacle of, of his position in the universe. And puzzlement is right. Mm -hmm. Now, the age of that, how far back does that date? Um, I can't remember. I think that it's uh, probably about 20 or 30,000 years. But and, yeah. and then the question arose, um, if humankind came from Africa, um, how did they get all the way from Africa into Australia yeah. to make this yes. work of art yes. uh, that is now 20, 30,000 years old? Yes. Um, and the route you took? 
Well, um, the, you know, the generally accepted, uh, and I, I'm simply repeating what I know about the, uh, about the science, but, but I must stress I'm not a scientist. I'm a, I'm a writer of accessible books. Um, they came across the base of the Red Sea, probably, according to some people, it's still contentious, um, probably around 80 to 85,000 years ago. And the, they were then anatomically modern. They were like you and I. The only difference was that they had, believe it or not, slightly bigger, bigger brains. But they had bigger brains because their challenges were not only things like scent and traffic and, mm -hmm. and, and other stuff that, that uh, tax us now. And they, they had huge survival problems and it was during, when they left, it was during the, uh, the big major ice age which lasted for 120,000 years. And all, a lot of the water was locked up in the poles, therefore the sea levels were lower and they could probably virtually walk across uh, the base of the Red Sea at a place called, um, what did I call it? Ga the, the, the Gate gates of, of Grief, grief the gates which of grief. also has just seemed amazing. That fitted perfectly into the um, idea of the puzzlement of the petroglyph uh, uh, on the west coast of Australia and the puzzlement that mm. must attend my grandson. And so, so you were examining as you traveled this route um, the, the where the dawn of human consciousness came, mm. uh, where people became aware of the world around them and started interpreting it yes. and started creating religion or religious yes. impulses and artwork as a, yes. as a result of that. Um, some of the places um, that you visited, I just want to quickly go through, um, through some of them. From Ethiopia, you went to Djibouti, yeah. and then from Djibouti you went to Yemen. No, no Oman. Yeah, oh. people, sorry, advised sorry, me not, <laughs> people advised me not to go to <laughs> Yemen. Okay. I would have loved to have go gone to, to Aden, uh -huh. but I, I didn't. And mm -hmm. we, we, uh, I went to um, Oman, mm -hmm. to Muscat. And um, these places kind of unfold so brilliantly, you know, because you know, you're vaguely aware of these places, but to actually do it is, um, is astonishing. It really is, and I hope some of that astonishment mm -hmm. comes through. It does. It absolutely does. Yeah. Um, then from there you went to Iran, yes. and uh, you were in a city called Yazd. Yes. And I just want to read something from your book um, that really jumped out at me. And you write here, These thoughts fed into my expectation of the day before me. I wanted to climb the stairways of the past until I got to the beginning of things. I saw vultures circling, and in my mind they turned into hawks, gliding over a thousand scattering chicks. From birth to death, that was the trajectory of decay. But what I wanted to go back to, a place before our collective birth, before the implanted furniture of danger and survival had begun to be constructed. I wanted the beginning of the beginning, and only then would I understand the trajectory. And you're talking here about the furniture in the mind. That is what has been com coming through us genetically, through our ancestors, and which um, uh, influences the way we perceive yeah. and understand the world. Yeah. Could you tell me a little bit more yeah. about your thoughts around this? Um, I think, you know, it, it, uh, the, the chicks are uh, a perfect example of what, what I began to understand. And that was that um, somebody did some experiments with the chicks and they, they ran a silhouette of a hawk over a coop of one day chicks and the chicks scattered. And we have in us stuff that happened millions of years ago. And I think, you know, I mean, in our brains, we have a reptilian brain and a mammalian brain and then the neocortex, which is, which is our special kind of contribution. Mm -hmm. But um, 
the idea that we are not alone, the idea that we are made in a mold that has survived because um, it has been so versatile, and the fears and the aspirations have been built into us for as long as we can imagine backwards. And the, for me, one of the fascinating things is that uh, so many religious uh, beliefs try and isolate, especially the monotheistic religions, they try and isolate the, the individual to, and make him solely and utterly and completely responsible for himself. And I accept that, but it's not the whole, it's not the whole picture. And so I believe that it's, it is of huge importance to understand that the, we all come from a long and coherent line of evolution. Um, our time is up, but I just want to quickly go through the, the, the rest of the journey that you took. It's quite a long journey and, and with uh, major experiences along the way. Um, from Iran, you went to India, you went to Sri Lanka, you went to Bangkok. Um, where else did you go? From Bangkok, I wanted to go to um, Cambodia, um, so we, I did. <laughs> Um, I was very interested in Cambodia simply because it seemed to me to illustrate, but in, in a, in a non-religious way, it seemed to me to illustrate the results of dogma. And in Cambodia, they killed two-thirds of their own population in the genocide. And it emerged from, in that case, communist dogma. And dogma is what we should not be doing. Because we, uh, what is so brilliant for me is that we all come from Africa. We, are, we all have um, genetic traces of African uh, ancestors in us. And in Africa, there is this idea of Ubuntu. And I, I really do believe that, that much of humanity has actually forgotten that. And they're so busy kind of differentiating between themselves and other people and building walls around borders and stuff like that. That I hope that the message from my book is that humanity is one species. And, and I, I celebrate that. David, thank you. Thank you so much. We've, we've barely touched the surface of, of your book and I would have loved to have chatted to you for an hour easily, I'm sure, <laughs> we could have chatted much longer than that. Um, well, well, I could come back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, David. Mm. The book is Walking to Australia, 21st Century Excursions into Humanity's Greatest Migration. And the author, of course, is David Robbins. A fascinating read that goes much deeper than our everyday conversations. And that was it for this edition of Talking Books. Thanks for watching. Thank you.